Hi, this is Sean from Mind Possible, and this is my fifth and I think final video about my recent book, Mindsight. And I'm really hoping that some remote viewers will watch this video and consider taking a look at that book. And also the people interested in learning how to see without eyes get interested in remote viewing. Because what I see actually, and I could be wrong about this, is the people interested in seeing without eyes or seeing blindfolded, they're over here in this silo. And then people interested in remote viewing are over here. And what I wanna do is encourage cross-pollination of ideas because I think each modality has something to offer people practicing the other modality. Remote viewers are really good at perceiving scenes distant in space and time. And I'm really generalizing here. I know it's more complex than that, but they have their own methodology, their own protocol. People interested in seeing blindfolded or seeing without eyes, they're really good at colors and they also are good at practicing seeing letters and numbers. And I think in the remote viewing groups, there's this idea that letters and numbers are really, really difficult, if not impossible for most people. But meanwhile, these people who can see without eyes are learning how to read books without their physical eyes. And both aspects, I think, have something in common in terms of the use of consciousness, particularly with psychic abilities and precognition. Uh, I've worked with a group using associative remote viewing. We've won the lottery a couple times, not the big lottery, but a small lottery. We won it a couple times. Speaking of that, there's a new book for, about associative remote viewing written by Deborah Katz and John Knowles, and it's called Associative Remote Viewing. Both groups, the Seeing Without Eyes folks and the remote viewers should check out that book. But anyway, if you're a remote viewer, you might want to consider training in Mindsight because imagine getting a lot better at perceiving colors, letters, numbers, and shapes through these exercises of Mindsight. And if you're a Mindsight person who's really good at that stuff, imagine what you could do with remote viewing training where you expand your ability to perceive entire scenes, events, issues about people or things that happened historically, things that you can verify, stuff that's gonna happen tomorrow, or things like that. So I don't wanna confuse you, but basically I'm saying if you're into mind sight or seeing without eyes, check out remote viewing. And one way to do that is looking at my book, Signal and Noise. If you're a remote viewer and you wanna improve some of your skills, some of the specific qualities of working with colors, shapes, letters and numbers, consider training in mind sight or seeing without eyes. And I think both of these modalities have something to offer practitioners of the other. And a person who is experienced with both, imagine what they could do. I think there's a lot of fun, adventure, and discovery possible, and also keeps you from getting bored if you train in both instead of just doing one the rest of your life.